Hi guys, Jangro here. I need to update my Valhelsia 3 server, so I thought I'd make a quick video to show you how easy that is to do on Bisect Hosting. Um, but any hosting provider that uses, especially ones that use the Multicraft Hosting Manager platform, this will be basically the same. First thing we need to do is download the Valhelsia 3 files on CurseForge. So we go to the Valhelsia 3 CurseForge page, click Files. The main file we don't want, that's the the full version for running it on your PC. What we want is the server pack, which is right here under additional files. You can see this is version 3.4.4, uploaded four days ago. So we're gonna download this file. It's pretty big. So while this is downloading, we can head over to Bisect and get started on that side of things. And I have a budget panel. These same instructions will work for a premium panel. Though if you have premium, you can they'll do it for you. Uh, I used to have that and I found that I was doing it faster than they would. So I ended up switching over to the budget hosting and save myself I don't know, 12 bucks a month or something like that. Okay, so here we are in our Bisect budget control panel. First thing we wanna do is just make sure we have a backup. So you click on the backup manager, they do it nightly, automatically. So you can see I've already got one from six hours ago, but I can, I've got a couple of backup slots. Give it a name, pre 3.4.4 update, just to make sure we can go back if we need to. Okay, we'll head back home in the navigation. Just a quick look here, since Valhelsia 3 is on Minecraft 1.16.5, it uses Java 8, and we're using this custom jar file, which is Java 8. So we don't, if this is already running Valhelsia 3, we don't need to update this. If you're switching versions of Minecraft or you're, you're doing a little more shuffling than what we're doing here, you might need to change this over, but it should already be set. It's called custom.jar, just worth mentioning. So if we click over to the file manager, there are some files we need to delete. The minimum files we need to delete here are config, default configs, kube.js, libraries, mods, open loader, and custom.jar. So once we've checked off these, these files, these other files you can leave. There's some logs and stuff you can delete if you want to clean things up. You should definitely not delete some of these things like the chili books and paintings and structurize. These are all things that you've know your options. Uh, these are things that you've already customized and don't want to remove. So click delete. We've got a backup, so there's no worries. Simple as that. Okay, now we're gonna head, now this file is downloaded, we're gonna head over and extract this. So I just clicked on it and it opened it right up in my downloads folder. If you don't have this here, just go find that file. So it's like right here in my downloads folder. It's a zip file double click on it, and we want to extract all. Show extracted files when complete. This is gonna take a, another moment. And it's, it's right here to close this window. So again, if we head back to our downloads folder, just so we know what we're looking at here, there's our zip file still there, but it created this folder called server. And we want to, we're working in here. Now this is the base uh, server files, it needs to be built because the mod pack owners can't distribute Minecraft with their mod packs. So we need to run the server start command. We can just double click this and run it and it will work usually. But let's head in here and do it manually just so we can see it. So you right click on the folder itself. So I'm in downloads, right click and open this in Windows terminal. I now have a Windows PowerShell that has these same files in it. And if we were, we're gonna run the server start.bat. Uh, now the Java version that you have on your computer, you do need to have Java. So you can type Java minus V, or minus version, I think, to see what version of Java you're running. I have both on this computer, but the default one is Java 16. That's okay for this. There's, you need, if you're gonna actually run a server on this machine, it needs to be Java 8, but just to install it, and create the server files, 
Java 16 is totally fine. If you did need to change where which Java it was running, you could edit the server start dat file and put a path on the Java command, but there's no need to do that typically. You can't just run server start dot dat, like type that in. It needs to have the path on it like that. So dot slash server start dot dat. And when we run that, it's going to go through the motions of downloading library files from Mojang. And basically we're installing the actual Minecraft server on here. Now at the end, it's going to try to actually run the server and it's going to, it's going to crash. It's going to fail. Um, and that's fine. We don't actually need to run the server here. It is starting it and there's an error, but that's fine. We don't, we're not running the server. We're just running it that first time to create the files. So now you'll see there's some more files in here. And if we head back over to our folder, we can see that there's more stuff in here. So at this point we need to, we can, we can upload these files individually by using an FTP client, but that's an extra step. That's just not even, that's just not necessary. So these same files we deleted, config, default configs, kubejs, libraries, mods, open loader and there's a file call in here called forge some version numbers here this is our custom.jar file we can rename it here to custom.jar before we upload it or we can just upload it and change the name on the server let's do it right here although i lost these files so we need to, i'm holding control select So these are the files, the same exact files that we deleted. We're selecting these all, and then I'm gonna right click, send to compress zip folder. This is really the fastest way to upload files by is compressing them into a single zip file. If you try to upload these, all these libraries and stuff directly via FTP without compressing them into a single file, it's gonna take a really long time. Okay, it's gonna give it some name You don't have to change that name. I just do because I end up leaving them on the server and then I need to know what they are. Okay. So now we need to put this file up on to our hosting. And to do that, we're, we're in the file manager already, but we'll just, you know, click that to go there and we need to upload that file. Now we can just drag the file in here. zip file and it'll take a minute to upload this most of the time this takes is just downloading and uploading files it's otherwise really easy okay that is completed I went and got a cup of coffee while that was uploading We'll, we'll have sped through that. Okay, we close out this screen and now there should be this file that this is the file that we uploaded. This is getting to the size of where this web interface might not might not work and you have to use an FTP client, but not yet. So we check that, go up here to the menu more and click on archive. We want to make sure that we're in the root folder here, which you are if you just clicked on file manager. But so it defaults to this. If this says something other than just a slash, like slash mods, if you are looking in there, just change it to slash. You click on archive. Okay, now it has been on archived. We can delete that file. We don't need it and it will kind of fill up our backups a little, so why not? At this point, we've updated our server. We already named custom.jar. If we did not rename that on our PC before we archived it, you can just check it, click rename, 
and change the name to custom.jar. Now we go back to the home screen and click start. We watch our server start on the console so we can see any errors that happen. There's more or less complicated ways to host Minecraft. Um, if you know if you want totally hands off and you've got money to spend, do the premium and you can just send a request when there's an update and they'll update it for you. If you're totally hands on, you can host this on a PC at home. You can buy some hosting from you know just a regular hosting provider, Amazon Web Services. But what's great about Bisect is that you know it's got this interface here, so I can restart the server with you know, clicking buttons, I can check the console log, watch it live. These are all things that you can do manually on a regular hosted Linux server somewhere, but that's still gonna cost money. So, so this is still running. If we take a quick look over here, you can just kind of see by doing it yourself, you can save about 10 bucks over or more because I'm running this premium, I'm running the six gigabyte package for this server. I have a handful of people that play in here and it handles it really well. I had less in it and it didn't go so well. And it, you know, I pay 18 bucks a month. I could be paying 30 bucks a month for, and I used to for the premium package. And like I said before, I ended up doing this all myself anyway. So I really didn't get any of the benefits from the premium package once I learned what, what I was doing. So $18 a month budget package, six gigabytes. LLC3 takes a while to start up. And here we are, our server's running. And now we can head on in and we can see that the server's there and live. This X, you can ignore that because there are just too many mods for it to figure out. I can't start it because I haven't updated my client yet. All right, so it's as simple as that. It really doesn't take very long, it's very easy to go through the process to upgrade your server. Uh, when there's a Valhalla 3 update, it's, you can probably do this yourself. There's really no reason to pay for premium hosting services unless you just don't wanna be bothered. But if you can save that money, you can put it toward uh, more RAM for your server, uh, give yourself some better performance for the same amount of money. So if you wanna check out Bisect, I'll drop a link in the description. There'll be links to everything in the description. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.